segregation in education. And we're talking to Ms. Linda Wynn and Ms. Alice Epperson. Uh, and of course, Ms. Epperson, before we uh, had our first commercial break, we were talking about uh, the class of 1966. And I think you were uh, indicating some very, very prominent individuals who graduated in that class. And let's continue that to give you an opportunity to talk about uh, some of those uh, persons. Well, Ms. Wynn is going to talk about 66. I'm going to I'm talking mention about 62. those. 62. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. 62. Good. Very good. 62. Um, there are a number of small business uh, representatives in the Nashville area who are graduates mm -hmm. of that class. I think what's more important than to say globally we have a lot of recognition mm -hmm. is to realize that we have a congenial group of alumni in the Nashville area who work very hard together um, to keep the museum, for example, or to encourage young people to remain in school and obtain their education. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and of course, these individuals are still doing uh, important things in yes. the uh, area of Nashville, and right. they still recognize Pearl High School as having a common bond. The school. The, 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 as the, the school. high school. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, well, about the uh, class of 1966, uh, Ms. Will, let's talk about that class. Oh, the class of 1966 we think was one of the uh, more illustrious classes and was a class that made history. In 1966, we became the first class to participate in the uh, TSSAA basketball championship. Mm -hmm. That was the first year that it was uh, integrated. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me put a comma there and go back to 65 because it was the class of 65 that enabled the class of 66. When the class of 65 played Father Ryan, which was the first time that an all-black school mm -hmm. played an all-white school, and it was uh, some concern throughout the Nashville community that mm -hmm. after the game that there would be a big race ride. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, uh, Pearl lost that game in, in 65 mm -hmm. uh, with the last-minute shot by Willie Earl Brown, mm -hmm. who was an African-American, who played for Father Ryan. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, there was not a riot. Mm -hmm. uh, after all, Willie Earl Brown was from the African American community. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people knew Willie Earl and respected him as a tremendous athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, the following year, when the TSSAA desegregated, well, mm -hmm. the uh, Pearl High class of 66 went all the way and won the state championship. Mm -hmm. We had a perfect season, uh, 31 and, and 0. Mm -hmm. Uh, several of our members of that particular class, Perry Wallace, for example, mm -hmm. went on to sign a grant aid with uh, Vanderbilt University, mm -hmm. becoming the first African American to play basketball mm -hmm. in the SEC. Mm -hmm. uh, Walter Murray, who was a classmate and also class president, also joined uh, Perry at Vanderbilt mm -hmm. and ultimately became the first African American to sit on the board of trust at Vanderbilt mm -hmm. University. Uh, several members in the class of 66 have managed to obtain a first status. Mm -hmm. uh, that class is, is very interesting because it was right in the middle, if you will, of the black revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, it was during the time when, when black power was beginning, mm -hmm. beginning to come in. Uh, we were right there at, at the 64 signing of the Civil Rights Act, the 65 mm -hmm. uh, Civil Rights Act. Uh, so we were right in the middle of that, of that black revolution. and it's, uh, there is a, a bond. Uh, our class gets together mm -hmm. every five years for a class reunion, mm -hmm. and we've done that. Uh, well, we just celebrated our 30th reunion back in June of last year. Now, Ms. Epperson, I understand that uh, quite uh, uh, soon that you're going to be celebrating uh, what might be considered a centennial uh, mm -hmm. at Pearl. And let's uh, talk about that since we've t dealt with these uh, classes of 62 and the classes of 66. But uh, with the centennial, you're inviting all of the various classes right. uh, back to Pearl as, uh, to become a part of it. Let's talk about the inception of that idea. Okay, before the centennial, uh, the class of 62 will, will celebrate its 35th anniversary uh, July 5th of this year. Um, the kickoff for the centennial celebration, which will be held the second weekend in August of 98, uh, was held on Sunday, May 25th at the New York Club. Um, the congregation there was very outstanding. It gives an idea of what we look forward to next year. Last year, there were 385 uh, former students who registered to participate in that reunion. It's a celebration to bring together a lot of people who may or may not participate in individual mm -hmm. classes. 
Um, included in that agenda for next year will be a gospel concert. Mm -hmm. There will also be a band concert, which is very significant because Pearl High hosted one of the only concert bands in the city. Mm -hmm. And many of those alumni will come back and perform in that band concert again, uh, probably with the direction of Mr. Marcus Gunner, who mm -hmm. was a long time a band director at the school. Mm -hmm. So that will be the second weekend next year. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, we do have an ongoing activity during the months of July, August, and September. Mm -hmm. The third Sunday of every month for those months, between the hours of 4.30 and 6.30, mm -hmm. uh, the museum is open. Uh, to my knowledge, the Pearl High Alumni Museum is the only high school black museum in the state mm -hmm. uh, under the direction of Ted Lennox who with a number of people from various classes have worked very hard over the past few years to bring together the artifacts from Pearl Hat School. And so you've got uh, in existence a large number of artifacts from various uh, individuals. And I would imagine that folks who do have something that they consider to be significant and that they would like to donate uh, to this museum, you, you're ready to accept that. Is that what we're saying this morning? Yes. Ted Lennox would be very happy. Mm -hmm. to receive from any interested party uh, artifacts that they feel may be of importance to him. A lot of people have contacted Ted uh, with information, some of which we already had, uh, uh, some of which we didn't have. Mm -hmm. um, we're interested in all of that information. Yeah, so it's a constant growing kind it of is. activity. It's uh, a very nice museum if you have not visited mm -hmm. that museum. Um, the location is very interesting as well. Uh, the old boy and girl gym locker rooms were hauled out and that's the uh, museum location now. You enter from the Jill Johnson side and um, that's where the museum is it's, it's all part of the old, uh, formerly the old Pearl High School that is right. now uh, the uh, Pearl Magnet School. Is, right. is that what we're saying now? That's, that's correct. That, well, that it's, it's the Martin Luther King P oh, Magnet sorry, School, yeah. uh -huh. but it, it is in the, the former building of uh, mm -hmm. Pearl High School. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pearl had three locations. I already mentioned the one in South Nashville. Mm -hmm. In 1916, it moved to uh, 16th Avenue North, uh, what is now Ireland. And in 1937, due to uh, growth of student population, it moved to uh, the corner of uh, 17th and Joe Johnston. Uh, when we talk about the artifacts that are contained in the museum, uh, there there is a a graduation. And let me interrupt you here, Ms. Wynn. We've got about five or six seconds before our commercial break, and we'll be back and we'll talk about that when we come back. We'll be back with you following this short commercial break. And segregation and education.